Um, Britain, uh, as long as you make sure and have um, click submit for all the stuff you've done, it should be safe. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would suggest that uh, when you're working on it, go scroll down, click down that bottom. Remember that button that um, I talked about on that first day of class that I really don't know what it does other than kind of just resubmits everything. Um, just click on that one and that, that makes sure everything got submitted. Um, but it won't save it if you haven't submitted. But yeah, you don't have to do it in one sitting at all. Most of these can't be done in one sitting, to be honest. Yeah, bad internet's the bane of classes these days. Um, Cameron, that's what the help session's for. We'll do. I'll, I'll talk more about that uh, here in a little bit. But basically tomorrow. Okay, um, so I think we're ready to go here, folks. Um, so a couple things here first. Um, over the weekend, yesterday, I think it was, um, I put a bunch of stuff over on Blackboard and sent an email out uh, letting you all know it was there. Um, making sure, of course, you check your Lamar email accounts. Yeah, okay. Um, that's where all the Blackboard stuff gets sent to. Um, but two things you need to pay attention to. First of all, under the course content section, same place where all the, uh, the templates and my notes are at. Um, I added a folder called exams. There is uh, several pieces of information in there. Um, one is a fairly lengthy uh, post about how exams in general are going to work, folks. Um, please, please, please read through that stuff because um, as you will find, uh, or some of you are going to find, unfortunately, um, is I don't have sympathy for saying I didn't know the rules when they're posted, okay? Um, some of you are gonna violate the rules. I'm gonna throw the book at you and I'm gonna say, too bad, read the rules next time. Okay, so uh, make sure you read that. I know it's long, but read through it so you understand how regular exams are going to work. Okay, um, now also there should be an announcement up in the announcement section for the practice exams. Again, I'll put all the announcements for practice exams up there. Um, so all that stuff is kind of sitting there, not buried inside of other things, easier to find. Okay, um, the practice exam that we're going to run is going to be next Tuesday. Uh, I'm not going to say a lot about it at this point. I'll say a little, a little bit more about it on Monday. But at this point, um, just be aware it's from 7 in the morning to 7 at night. And I'm doing it that way because I don't feel like I can take a whole class period um, out of here just to do a kind of a practice exam. Okay, no, that would take too much time. Okay, so um, if, if I do it from 7 in the morning to 7 at night, everyone should be able to find a 30-minute period in which to take care of it. That's all it should ever take you to do. Okay, it probably won't take you that long to do it. Okay, so um, just sit down and run through it. Um, it's designed again to teach you how things are going to run on exams. Okay. Now, a um, couple things about this. First of all, of course, remember that your regular exams are not going to be from seven to seven. They're during regular class time. That's it. Okay. So that's all the time you're going to be able to take them is during regular class time. So be careful with that. Okay. Um, the Thursday, no, it should be Tuesday. Um, next Tuesday. So, week from tomorrow. Um, so, uh, but again, all that stuff should be is over there um, on, the, on the announcement stuff and what's going to be and everything. So, um, but a couple things to note. First of all, um, well, I will technically be running a Zoom meeting for it because remember during regular exams, you are required to be in a Zoom meeting. Okay. Um, it, basically, I'm going to run, I'm going to start up a Zoom meeting at seven o'clock ish um, Tuesday morning, and then uh, I'm going to walk away from it. But basically, since I'm quote unquote the host of the meeting, I have to be there. Okay. So, um, so I will be in the meeting, or at least it'll say I'm in there, although in likelihood I will not be there because I'll either be in class or take care of other things, okay? But you can start pop in and say hi if you want to. Um, but the real point of the Zoom meeting there, folks, is, is if you're not familiar with Zoom, then make sure you attempt to connect to the Zoom meeting, yes? Okay, um, that way you know what's working because again, um, if you don't do this, folks, and then again, come exam time, you can't connect to the Zoom meeting, I'm not gonna have a lot of sympathy for it because that is part of the point of this, uh, practice exam is to make sure you guys are comfortable with this technology, yeah, okay? Although I'm guessing most folks are probably familiar with Zoom, okay? Um, at this point, given the pandemic and everything. 
Um, there is also information in the exam folder that kind of is a quick little, here's where it is, here's how you get it, here's how you can kind of at least do a quick little uh, test to make sure audio and video is working, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so uh, again, if you're not familiar with Zoom, go through and take a look at that. Okay? Now, the next thing I would comment on real quickly here, folks, um, is there is also under that exam folder, there is a way that for you guys to convert images to PDFs. Because on exams, of course, the practice exam included, you're going to be required to basically snap photos with your phone and then upload them to Blackboard. Okay, now, um, I only take, um, yes, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a link to the Zoom download in the, in the stuff over on Blackboard. So, um, but, um, sorry, I'll train my thought there. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, you're going to be required to upload everything as PDFs. Now, the reason for this is simple, folks. Back in the first half semester when COVID hit, um, I did all this uh, with Blackboard, and I had folks upload stuff there. And boy, I had folks upload things in oddball formats that the computer barely recognized. I had to download them to my computer, find a program that would, would view them, et cetera, et cetera, and then bring them up so I could do the grading. Right? Um, PDF is something, of course, that every computer can handle. It'll open up right in my browser, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so, so I'm going to require that you do everything as a PDF. Okay? Um, just make it easier for me. If you don't do PDFs, um, as long as you know, Britain, as long as um, it, it outputs as a PDF, I don't care. Okay, um, but you have to do a PDF for for upload. Okay, um, but um, if you don't do PDFs, I'll take points off. Okay, so be aware of that fact. Okay, and that, that's in the instructions and in the rules and stuff like that. Okay, so make sure you're aware of that fact. Um, there is an app again. There's instructions over in the exam content with an app that you can put on your phone. Um, that will convert basically it'll take the pictures for you and then merge them all in a second and merge them all into a single pdf okay so i again what i would suggest if you're not familiar with a way, a way to do that on your phone go and read that one and then get the app it's on ios and android both it's simple to use okay and then maybe do a quick little test uh, uh just play around with it a little bit and then for practice exam you can test it for sure make sure it works and then you're ready to go for regular exams okay so yeah. uh, Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's lots of apps that will do this. Okay, yeah. It's just the one I put over there is one that I know is easy to use. It's free and it's on Android and iOS. So, uh, yeah. There, if you don't have to use that, there are a ton of ways you can do this. Okay. Um, in fact, I don't use that. I use other tools. Okay. Um, but the other tools I use are required you to pay for, and I'm not going to make you guys do that. So, so yeah. Um, well, I don't care how you do it. I just need. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, uh, so many classes have the same thing. Yeah. Um, but basically, I don't care how you do it, as long as it gets to PDF and gets up work, okay? That's all I care about. So, okay, um, at this point, folks, that's all I'm gonna say about it. I'll say a little bit more about the practice exam itself on Monday when it's a little bit closer to it. Um, oh, I should say as well, folks, um, there is no studying for this. I'll tell you right now, you're gonna be asked to solve two quadrats and graph eight, or, so, yeah, sorry, solve two quadrats and graph eight parabola. Everyone can do that, okay? So I'm confident of that stage, okay? So it's real simple. Just basically, I want you to do a little bit of math and then take some pictures of a knuckle, basically, okay? So, but I'll say more about that um, on Monday, uh, next Monday, um, for the exam itself. Okay. So, all right. Next thing. Um, as I commented on Friday, folks, um, your homework is due on Wednesday. Yes. Okay. So, if you haven't started it, folks, you need to start it. Okay. And I'm not talking the practice. That should be that should be the the introductory one. Um, you should be done with that too, because that shouldn't take you all but just a few minutes to kind of crank through and do that one. Um, but the first real one, folks, you need to get started on it. Okay, is this is these first couple of homeworks going to take you time? Okay, so if you wait to the last minute doing the homework, folks, you are in trouble with that. It's going to take you way too much time to go through and do it. Okay. Um, all right. Now, having said that, so it's due on Wednesday. Um, tomorrow we're going to do first what I'm going to call what I call help days, help sessions. What I want to call them. Um, basically, it's the same standard class period. So if you're if you're scheduled to come to class, come to class yeah, online online. Right, kind of thing. Um, you can come in and ask questions. Um, there was one about the last homework problem, and yeah, I expect to get questions about that one. Okay. Um, so if you got some questions about the homework, you can ask them there. Um, be aware, though, that again, I am not going to sit here and just work homework props for you. Okay. Um, more often than not, I will find something similar and say, okay, if you can follow this one, you should be able to do the homework problem. Okay. Um, but I'm just simply not going to come in and work homework props for you. Okay. That's, that kind of defeats the purpose of homework. Right now, with the exception of that last one, I'm probably going to give you a hint or two on that last one because that's, I've, I've been looking for one similar to that that I can bring down and I can't find one similar enough that the, not basically is the same thing with a couple numbers changed. Okay, so um, so that one I'll probably give you a hint or two to get you started, but once you get started on it, hopefully it won't be too bad. Okay, all right, so uh, but basically you can come for that tomorrow, folks, and then if we run out of questions, um, and of course you don't have to ask about homework, but I will uh, 
deal with homework stuff first because it'll be due on Wednesday. Um, after the homework questions, you have any other questions, you know, lecture material or something like that, we can go through and deal with some of that stuff. Um, and then if we run out of questions, I will simply start lecturing at that time. Okay. So, uh, okay. So there we go. So any questions on how, I guess, next couple of days are going to work? Yeah. Okay. So um, the next couple of problems I'm going to work. So I'm still doing integrals involving trig stuff, folks, here. But again, like I commented on on Friday, folks, um, these have no bearing on your homework at this stage. Now, they will have bearing on homework down the road, but at this stage, nothing on your homework requiring these. Basically, folks, what we have here is a couple of integrals that you're going to run into on a semi-regular basis. And I want to make sure, um, well, I'll come on that here again. Okay. So a couple of integrals you're going to run into on a regular basis. Now, the first one is the integral of tangent. Um, so one thing with this, of course, folks, as well, is, is to understand, again, that the process that we talked about, because we just got done doing that on Friday, yeah, talking about integrals involving secants and tangents. Um, and every integral I want to do here has got to have a secant or a tangent in it, okay? The problem is, is the process that I taught you is useless, okay? It's completely useless to what we're going to do today, okay? So, uh, again, when I said when we see tangents and secants here, I want to think to myself, okay, I see a tangent here, so it's convenient to think maybe u equals tangent will work as a substitution. The problem is, is, is that remember that du is a secant squared. So to use u equals tangent, you have to have a secant squared floating around the problem. And well, I pretty clearly don't. Yep. Okay. So I can't do u equals tangent. Just won't work for me. Okay. Um, I could try u equals secant. Again, just because I don't see a secant doesn't mean that I can't do a u equals secant for a substitution. We absolutely can. Okay. We'll see an example of that down the road in the next section. Okay. Um, but again, u equals secant as a substitution requires a tangent, spiffy. I've got that, but it also requires a secant for my substitution. Again, I'm missing a secant. So basically, u equals tangent, u equals secant is useless to me. Yeah. Okay. So I can't do that. Now, secant and tangent. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, now, having said that, though, this is an integral that I actually hope that everybody saw in Calculus 1. And if you had me for Calculus 1, you saw this integral, because this is basically a Calculus 1 integral, right? So, um, remember something that I said, um, yes, in fact, it's actually on the screen here. Um, when we have things we're mixing and matching, so say, in this case, I wrote down cosines and tangents here, um, sometimes you want to convert to or kind of combine up into one. Yeah. So all si all signs, all or sorry, all signs and cosines or all secants and tangents. Yep. Yeah? Okay. The thing is, is that can be done other times as well, folks. So in this case, like this with tangents, well, I can't do tangent, I can't do secants. So maybe I can convert to something else and I can do something else. Yep. Yeah? So one thing that we know from calc one, and this is why this is a calc one problem, because it's basically calc one. Okay. We know that a tangent, of course, is just sine over cosine, right? Yep, so sine over cosine. Yep. Okay, so there we go. Now, um, fractions here, folks. Okay. Um, in general, again, this is calc one. Yep. Okay. So in calc one, um, you may not have seen this uh, suggested to you in your in your calc one stuff. Um, I think I probably gave it suggested to my calc one students, but not every instructor kind of points this out. But anytime you've got yourself a rational expression here, yep. Okay. One thing you can always try, may not work, but you can always try, is just take your denominator and differentiate it. Ask yourself, what do you get? So what's the derivative of cosine? What is the derivative of cosine? Somebody help me out. Negative sine. Yep, yeah, good. Okay. Take that and compare it to your numerator. Is it off by a constant? Yes or no? Multiplicative constant. Okay. If it is, then there you go. There's your substitution. Just u equals your denominator because you can always fix up the constant in the numerator if you need to. Okay. If it's not, well, too bad. You can't do it. Okay. But in this case, the derivative of cosine is minus sine. Hey, off by minus sine. I can deal with that. Okay. So that means, oops. I'll just simply do u equals cosine, okay? Now that works for every fraction, folks. Try that every time you're into a fraction, okay? That's gonna be convenient down the road. Not so much in the next couple of sections, but um, in a section down the road, you're gonna do this all the time, okay? So be looking for this kind of thing. Again, I'll do the substitution. You're not going to do a lot of substitutions at this point, folks, but for this one, I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, take the minus sign, move it over, of course. Yeah. 
screen is not working today. Sorry about that. Okay, come down here. Equals minus sign. Go ahead and factor that out. Sine sine of x dx. That just gets sucked up into my du. Yeah. Du. And then one over one left over the numerator, of course, and then cosine is u. So one over u. Yep. Okay. Now next thing. Somebody want to help me out and tell me what is the integral of one over u? Because you're going to need to have this down good because it'll come up constantly in a couple of seconds. Natural log, good, yeah, natural log, wonderful, thank you, yeah. So natural log, um, except be careful, it's not natural log of u, it's what? Natural log of, absolute yes, absolute value of u, good, yes, wonderful, good, yeah. So absolute value of u, again, don't forget your ever-present constant, yep. Okay, and then of course u for us is cosine, so back to that. Okay, yeah. Um, at this point, folks, this is sufficient at some level. The integral of tangent is minus natural log of cosine. You can absolutely do that. Um, but I, again, with me and my hatred of minus signs, um, if I leave the minus sign here, eventually it merges up into the equal sign. So I tend to not use this formula. Um, remember, there's a formula for logarithms. We talked about this the other day. Um, a exponent on a, on a logarithm can bring out as a constant, yeah. That also means that this constants can come up as exponents then if I want to. Yep. Okay. So I'll have to squeeze this in here. But natural log cosine to the minus one plus c to the minus one, that's one over cosine. Yep. And what's one over cosine? One over cosine often called secant. Yep. Okay, so this is the formula that I'm going to use for integral of tangent, folks. If you want to use this one, be my guest. Either one are correct. Um, I believe WebAssign should be able to take either one of them. Okay. So uh, either one will work, but again, just be aware, like I said, this is the one that anytime I run into integral of secant that I'm going to use. Okay, just because, again, it loses that minus sign and I don't want to pass it with the minus sign. Okay, so everybody follow this one. Yeah, simple enough, quote unquote. I hope. Okay, now, um, just from time issues here, folks, um, I'm not going to do this example right here. If you want to see it, that's fine. Um, this was why I wanted, if I had time, I wanted to do this one, but I honestly, I rarely have time for this one. So we're just going to skip out on that one, not worry about it. And come down to the next one. Okay. Um, now, seeking. So again, um, so again, folks, you can try the stuff that we talked about. U equals tangent. Well, it wants two secants. I don't have two secants. So I can't do U equals tangent, okay? Um, I could try U equals secant. That wants a secant and a tangent. Well, again, it's got the secant, oh, but darn, it's missing the tangent. So again, both of the processes we talked about at this stage won't work for us, okay? So none of those are gonna work. Now, it turns out, this is also a Calc 1 problem, but you probably didn't see this in Calculus 1. Um, just because it involves a trick that, to be honest with you, I hate. Okay, um, I hate the trick simply because well, there's two reasons. Um, first reason is 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 that it rarely actually is useful. Okay. Second reason is 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 that it is almost never obvious to use the trick. Okay. So um, I'm going to do a trick here, folks, that I don't want you to worry about. There are no integrals anywhere in this class that will require this trick. Right? Ever. There might be one or two you can pull off, but there's simply not going to be, there are other ways to do integrals in this, in this class, okay? So this is a trick I don't want you to worry about, okay? So what I'm going to do, talk about why here in a second, okay? Um, I'm going to multiply by the following thing here. Take, so I take my original integral, secant. I'm simply going to multiply. Well, I can't multiply by secant tangent, yeah? But what I can do is multiply by a 1, right? And of course, that's all that is, yeah? That's just one. It's a very, very fancy way of writing one. That's all it is, right? So secant times tangent, sorry, secant plus tangent, sorry. Beat this trick. Secant plus tangent, I probably write that all over again. I apologize, folks. I knew I was gonna mess that up. Secant plus tangent, sorry about that, folks. 
B plus. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, and that's why. Now, again, folks, like I said, this is not obvious to do this. It's not obvious why this works. Okay, um, we'll see why it works here in a minute. Okay, but at this point, again, like I, said, I do not want you worrying about this, folks. Okay? There's no problems in this class that will require this trick in any way, shape, form, or no. Right? And what you multiply here, of course, is different for every problem, which is also why it's kind of a tricky trick to make it work. Right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my secant here, and because this is really secant over one now. Yep. So I can take this secant here and multiply it through the top. So if I do that, we're going to have a secant squared plus secant tangent. Yep. And the bottom, of course, stays the same. Well, actually, let me flip the bottom around a little bit. Yeah, order's not going to matter. That's right. You'll see what I'm doing this here in a second. And you don't have to do this. It just makes it a little bit more obvious what I'm doing. Okay, so write it as tangent plus secant versus secant plus tangent. It yeah, doesn't matter. Whichever way you want to do it, it doesn't matter. Okay. Now, at this point, folks, um, remember what we just got done saying a minute ago about all this stuff? Um, when you time you see a rational expression, a fraction, which is clearly what we have here, yes? Okay. Every time I see a rational expression, the first thing I always want to try is what? Differentiate the denominator and compare it to the numerator, yeah? So what's the derivative of my denominator? Well, the derivative of tangent is what? Oh, it's secant squared, isn't it? Okay, right above it. Plus the derivative of secant is what? Oh, secant tangent right above. It. Yep. In other words, the derivative of the bottom, after I did my trick, the derivative of my bottom is exactly equal to my numerator. Yep. Okay. Meaning that I can do a substitution. U equals secant plus tan or tangent plus secant. I see all the same order I've got it here, I guess. Yeah. Tangent plus secant. Okay, I'm not going to write the du down because du is literally just the numerator. That's it. Okay, so with this substitution, integral one over u du. Okay, now again, folks, I cannot stress enough this trick up here. It's not easy to see. Um, it's just just not fun to deal with in general. So don't worry about. It, okay, just I want to show you how this integral comes about. That's all I'm doing here. Okay, but there it is. Okay. Integral of one, no, sorry, integral of one over u, of course, is natural log absolute value of u, but u is this stuff right here. Yep. Um, I'm going to flip back the order because this is the order I'm used to writing it in, folks. So I'm going to go secant plus tangent. You don't have to do that, of course. Tangent plus secant is acceptable, but I'm just used to writing secant plus tangent. So I'm going to write the order I'm used to writing it. Okay, that right there, folks, that is a formula as far as I'm concerned, okay? Uh, I don't ever want you to go through and do this integral ever, ever, ever again, okay? Um, anytime you run into the integral of secant, and you will, folks, okay? Somewhere this semester, you will run into this, okay? Um, if not in the next section, um, in the next chapter's worth of material, this, these type of integrals tend to come up occasionally, okay? So you will run into this eventually. Basically, what I would suggest is write this thing down somewhere where it's sitting right in front of you so that when you run into it, you can simply trot out the formula and say, hey, integral of secant is natural log absolute value of secant plus tangent and walk away, okay? Just the formula. In this case, not the process. No, I don't want you to just, basically, you're going to do a lot of work to get to this point, okay? Uh, I don't want you to then turn around and take a lot of work to actually do this integral, okay? So so this is a case, this is where I'm going to do this. Most of the time, formulas aren't allowed in this class, yeah. Um, but this is a formula that you can absolutely use, okay? So um, similarly, um, with the next problem, this is basically a formula problem. Trust me, you don't want to be doing this problem if you don't have to, okay? All right, so question on this, everybody follow? Okay, okay so let us then do the next one. Now, secant cubed. Again, let me go through this kind of quickly, okay? Um, try u equals secant. Well, 
du is secant tangent. I'm missing a tangent. So yeah, can't do that. Okay, so u equals secant simply won't work for me. Um, notice though that u equals tangent kind of does work. So if I tried u equals tangent, even though I know there's no tangents here, yeah. But if I tried u equals tangent, well, du is secant squared. And unlike the previous couple, hey, I've got two secants here. Yeah. So this looks like maybe u equals tangent would work for us. So we could say, okay, I'll strip two of them out. Oh, but that leaves exactly one left over. Not the one that I care about. It's the fact that it's an odd exponent. Yep. Because remember then the rest of the secants have to get converted to tangents. Yep. Okay. And that means using that secant squared plus, or sorry, tangent squared plus one equals secant squared form. Yep. Okay. And again, remember when you have odd exponents left over, you don't ever want to use that stuff. Okay. So basically, while it looks like that might work, it won't. Okay, so that's not going to do for us. Now, if I had had a four here, secant to the fourth, perfect. Strip two of them out, keep my differential. I got secant squared left over. Convert those to tangents using that formula. Substitute away. Yeah. Okay, so if I had a four there, it worked. But that cube ain't something I want to be messing with. I just simply don't want to do that. So uh, basically, not going to hassle with it because it's too messy. Okay, so how are we going to do this problem? Now, how we do this, folks, is not obvious, okay? I want to make that really clear. This is not obvious how we do this. I would not expect anyone in this class ever, 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 ever would I expect anyone in this class to say, hey, this looks like a good thing to try, okay? So I don't expect that. Okay? I want you all to understand that, okay? Um, there is just simply no reason in the world to expect you to get this. Okay? But having seen it done, you can now say, ah, okay, now I know what, I know a way to do it at least, okay? So would you all agree? We've done this a couple times now. If I wanted to, and I do, I could take that secant cube and write it as secant times secant squared. I could do that, yes? Okay, good. Now, again, don't worry about why yet. All right, there it is. Now, um, do you remember when, you know, where we kind of started real lecture here? Um, I made the comment after the integration by part stuff, be careful with formulas because I can break them. Yeah. Well, guess what, folks? It's integration by parts. It's not obvious integration by part stuff, right? And the first thing I want you to notice is what I did here. I broke this secant cubed up into this and this. Okay, secant and secant squared, right? Now, what that means then is, is that one of those bits is going to go with the U and one of those bits is going to go with the Q, right? Notice what I did though. That whole thing there ain't going to go to the U and it ain't going to go to the DV, right? That's what I want you all to understand with this, okay? Again, kind of pattern breaking things here with, with integration by parts, okay? Sometimes this is what you have to do. You have to take a term and literally break it up. Okay, put part of it with the U, part of it with the DV, okay? Doesn't happen often, but it does happen on occasion. It's at least once on your home, right? So be ready for that. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I don't want to put secant with the DV. Well, because what I don't want to do, my mouse working here, scroll up, is I don't want to have, oops, Sorry, I'm not trying to run that here. There it is, sorry. Um, yeah, it's a little too far. Um, I don't want to have that thing float around my problem if I don't have to. At least not right away. Okay. So so I don't want to put the secant with the DV because then that means I have to integrate secant. I'm going to have that natural log showing up. Okay. So I don't want to have that unless I have to. Okay. But I can get away with it. On the other hand, I know exactly what the integral of secant squared is. Who wants to help me out? What's the integral of secant squared? Tangent, good, yeah, okay. So um, integral of secant squared is tangent. So let's put secant squared there because that is a dead simple integral. There we go, okay. Now, what's that mean for us then? That means the secant needs to come over here with the U then. That's the thing that's left over, okay. Now, the DU, yeah, not the most pleasant of things, but we can deal with it, yeah. So, 
so secant times tangent. Yep. Okay. Now, let's see if this works for us. So, integral secant cubed. Okay. Integration by parts. What do we have here? I've got u times v. So, secant times tangent. Which I know it's going to be x on the theta. Sorry about that. Okay. Minus integral of v times du. Yeah. Okay. So that's secant tangent times tangent, or combine out secant tangent squared. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Everybody follow? Not an easy problem, folks. Definitely not one I would ever expect anyone to see and have figured out how to do this. Okay. All right. Well, don't anyone to think I expect y'all do that? Because right? I don't. All right. Now. This first bit written down again, real quick. Well, I'm still stuck, Jones. Yeah, because if I try a u equals tangent, I need two secants. I've got one, but I don't have two. So u equals tangent won't work. Okay. Um, I could try u equals secant because I do have a secant and a tangent. Great. But again, once I strip one tangent out, I've got one of them left over. Oh, there's that odd exponent I got to convert to secants again, which I don't want to be doing. Right, so, so basically the u equals tangent, u equals secant stuff here just won't work for us. It's useless. So, if you're not sure what to do, you try something. Yep. Yeah? And I think what I feel like trying here, yeah, is remembering again tangent squared using that form that we talked about earlier. Tangent squared is just secant squared minus one, right? Does that do me any good? No, well, I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah. Okay. So, and sometimes this is what you have to do with integrals. Yeah. You just got to try something and hope it works, right? Okay. Right. Now, what I'm going to do here, folks, again, um, is I'm going to take this secant in my integral here. I'm going to go ahead and multiply it through my brackets. Yep. Yeah? So, secant times secant squared secant cubed minus, well, it's secant, yeah, secant times one. Okay. So I've got that far, right? Pretty following so far? Kind of, possibly, maybe, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I've got an integral of a difference here, yeah? Which means I can break this integral up as the difference of the two integrals. Would you agree with that statement? Okay. okay. So let's do that. So minus integral of secant cubed minus integral of secant. Okay. How do you agree? Good. Yeah, and you beat me to my question. Yeah, um, Santiago caught this. Um, what's my mistake? And my mistake is, is it's minus this integral. So technically, I'm going to erase these in a minute. Yep. Yeah. Um, technically, it's minus my integral. Yeah. So I need parentheses on the whole thing. Okay. You all agree with that? Yeah. Now, yeah. so I'm going to erase them because then what's my next step? My next step then probably is going to be take this minus sign and distribute it through. Yeah. So if I distribute it through. That minus here, yeah, becomes a plus. Minus of a minus becomes a plus. Yeah, you all agree? Okay. Um, in this case, normally I would say parentheses are not. It's up to you, but in this case, I need that that minus sign to distribute through. So I had to go ahead and do that. Okay, everyone following. So, for, oops, I forgot as well. Sorry about this, folks. I, I lost that my my cancel on it. Um, I need to sign back in there. I think I managed to erase that and I erased the brackets there. So at this point, we've got this. Now, let me also go yeah, write this back down one more time. Squeeze this in a little bit smaller here. So I need to put a bunch of stuff on the board here. So we're integrating secant q. Yeah. What is that? That's secant x tangent x. And I know it's kind of having to squeeze this in a little bit more than I like to do stuff. 
okay? Minus integral of secant cubed of x dx, okay? Plus integral of secant. Okay, well, I don't have a problem with the integral of secant. Why? Why do I not have a problem with that? Oh uh, yeah, because we've got a formula for it, yeah? So who cares? Okay, I can do that, and by, if I do that, I mean I can scroll back up and look at my formula and come back down and write it back in, yeah? Okay, so I can do that one. Now, the other problem here, though, is this monster sitting right there. Because now I've got, it looks like I need to know the integral of secant cubed to be able to get the secant cubed, yeah? But we saw this the other day, folks, right? I don't know the integral of secant cubed. I'll give that any of the week. I don't know what that is. But minus this integral, what can I do with this? I can take this whole integral and add it to the other side. Yeah. Okay. We did this with that integration by part stuff again. Okay. So it just show. I told you, remember, I said at the time it was going to come back up and do it again. This was the problem I was thinking about. Okay. Right? So let's add this to both sides. which then gives me two of them. So two integral of secant cubed. Yeah, yeah. Now keep in mind folks, the both time I've done this has just been a minus integral. Had there been say a minus five here, I'd add five of them to both sides to have a six over here, yeah, okay. Or if I'd had say plus a three, I could subtract three from both sides. And then, sorry, my, my board stuck, stuck down there. Um, as a plus three, I could subtract three from both sides and have a minus two over on the side. Yep. Yeah, okay. So it doesn't require just a minus sign here. It's basically whatever you've got here, as long as it's not a plus, so they just straight up cancel. Okay. So I've got two of them now is equal to secant times tangent plus, oh, plus integral of natural law or secant, which is natural log and absolute value of secant plus tangent. There we go. Yeah. And then our ever present plus C. Okay. Now, oops, sorry, sorry, not, sorry not, not plus C quite yet. Sorry about that. Forget about that. Don't put that in quite yet. I apologize. Erase that. Now, before I put the plus C on, what I need to do, of course, is I need to deal with the two here, but that's easy to deal with. What do I do? Yeah, just one half, divide out or multiply by one half, take your pick. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, then integral of C cubed. x is one half and then quantity or divide by two but I, I usually write this as a one half and every place i've seen it's got a one half times there so i'm gonna go with the same thing i've usually seen here and what i'm used to writing so one half quantity secant tangent plus natural log of absolute value secant plus tangent and now let's tap our plus c yeah Okay, folks, this one, much like the one up above, yeah, just have that written down somewhere because you do not want to go through this inside of another problem, right? Now, I will also say, folks, you're much more likely to run into the integral of secant cubed than you are to run into the integral of secant, right? So this is the more, more common of the two, but you are definitely going to run into this thing, okay? So make sure you can deal with this one, okay? And by deal with it again, have it written down somewhere. Right, so that you've got in front of me in case you're running, oh, excuse me, in case you're running. Okay, so questions on that, everybody follow. Okay, now, um, this is a long section, folks. I'm not gonna claim it's not. There's a lot of stuff here, okay? But once you get this stuff down, it's not bad. But again, it's that kind of getting down process that causes problems for folks sometimes, and I get that, okay? So, um, we are going to stop this off here for this section. We are done with this section. We're going to move on to the next section now. Now, um, I've made several comments about this section, folks, um, usually involving the word nightmare, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not trying to scare you, or I am, but what I'm trying to get you guys to understand, folks, is that this last, this next section is a rough section. And you got to be careful with this one. You don't want to try to rush through this one, especially on homework and stuff like that. Um, the problem that makes, or the, the issue, I should say, I guess, that makes this section rough 
is not that the material itself is that hard. I, at some level, I don't think the material itself is that hard. Um, what makes this section a nightmare is these problems take forever to do. Okay? I'm planning on probably taking about three days to cover this section of lecture time. That should tell you right there, okay? What these things are gonna be like, okay? Um, they are long problems, okay? And they're easy to mess up just because they're long problems and you're, you're gonna get yourself caught up in details sometimes. Um, there's a place where people are gonna wanna stop because they've been working long enough. They think, oh, this has gotta be the end, so I'm gonna stop here. And then unfortunately now I, you're only about you know two thirds of so three fourths of the way through the problem. Right. So, um, so basically, folks, um, these are just stuff you don't do if you don't have to, just because they are so long. Right. So you got to keep that in mind. Okay. Right? Now, like I always like to do with these things, I want to start off with a couple of Calc one problems. Okay. I've got them listed up here. So first one there, second one there. It's not going to do the work. You need to do it. Go ahead and do it after class. Check it out. Make sure you can do it. Both of those require the substitution u equals x squared minus a four. Yep. Okay, so make sure you can do those work. Make sure you can get the integrals here. Um, and again, of course, the whole point behind this, yeah, is that D, I'll put this part in, yeah. They work because du is at 50x dx, and that's what you see, yeah. x dx, well, there's my x times the dx. There's my x times dx for that substitution rule, right? Right? So, so both of these use that substitution right there, right? Calc 1. Now, problem is, Here's the example I want to work right here. Yep. This problem right here. Well, it looks like maybe I could do that substitution, but again, the substitution wants what? It wants x times dx. What do you have? You have dx divided by x or one over x times dx. You don't have the x times dx that you need for this substitution to work. So it will not work, right? It's not going to work for you. Now, how you do this problem Okay. If you remember the last section, the very first problem that I worked, it was kind of in that section, not a Calc 1 problem. The first thing I said was, don't worry about why. Just follow what I'm doing. The same comment holds here, folks. I do not want you to worry about why I'm doing certain things that I'm doing. Okay? I need the problem written down before it becomes a little bit clear as to why these things are going to work for us and why we're doing what we're doing. Right? So you've got to keep this stuff in mind a little bit here. Right? It's going to be confusing. You're not going to understand why I'm doing it. When I get down to a certain point in the problem or at the end of it, wherever I decide to stop, um, I will come back and start discussing the laws. Okay? But I want you to follow the individual steps. They're all the steps are dead simple, folks. Okay? It's just algebra and trig. That's all it is. Okay? So if you follow the steps, make sure you follow the steps without worrying about the whys. We will come back and discuss why down the road. Right? So do not worry about why is at this stage. I cannot stress that enough. I know some of you are going to anyway. I get that. Okay? But just try not to worry about it. Okay? Now, these are substitutions. Okay? But they're substitutions unlike substitutions you've ever done before, folks. Okay? So at this point, your substitution work has always been new variable u in terms of the original variable x. Yep. Okay? That's always how we've done substitutions. Well, they don't have to be done that way, folks. Okay? In this case, we're going to do a substitution in the opposite direction, x equals. Original variable in terms of a new variable. That's different than your u substitution, but it is still just basically a substitution. It's just not done the same way you're used to doing them. Right? Now, also, again, I do not want you to worry about where that two-fifths is coming from. You'll see why it's there in a little bit, okay? but don't worry about where it's coming from. Okay? And I really don't want you to worry about why I'm putting a secant down there. Right? Again, we will come back and we'll discuss the whys and we'll see how this why this works here in a bit. Do not worry about that. Right? Can't stress that enough. All right. Now, first thing we're going to do with all these problems, folks, is we're going to take the root to strip it out. Just going to work with that by itself first. Right? That's almost, almost always one of the first things that I do. So 25x squared minus a four. Okay, now, one of the nice things about this kind of substitution, folks, is, is that you don't have to do anything fancy. There's an x, there's an x, you plug in. Yeah, that's all you have to do, right? So, give it messy here. So 20, the square root of 25 times x, well, x is 2 fifths, secant theta, all that squared, minus a four, yeah? 
square root there. Get root there. Now, square everything out. So 25. Make sure you square the number. That's the bigger mistake folks make. Well, one of the mistakes people make is they forget to square the number. Yes, so two fifths squared, four over 25. Yes? Secant is, of course, secant squared. Okay, minus of four. There we go. It's too big. Okay, first thing to notice. First thing to notice is what? I could kill the 25s, yeah? Okay. Now, I'm going to write down a few more steps than normal for this, folks, and I want to make it quick. Okay, a lot of these steps, we're going to skip a lot of these steps and get the real problems, or actually real problems, and we get to work to other problems. A lot of these steps are going to be skipped, but this first one, I want to go really slow and do lots of steps so you can see what's going on. Okay, so I cancel the 25s. What's left over? Four, secant squared theta minus a four. Square root the whole thing, yeah? We're also going to notice now, this oops. fours both there and there. So if I want to, and I do, I can factor that four out. Yes. Okay. So you can square theta minus one. Okay. Oh, I've got a square root of a product now. So four times this thing here, right? And so I can break that up as square root of four times square root of that mess there. And well, it's square root of four is that's of course just two. So there it is. And then square root of secant squared minus a one. Okay, now, do you all follow the steps that I did? Again, not worrying about some of the y's. Don't worry about y, yeah? Okay, I plugged an x in. I squared said x. That's algebra. That's arithmetic. Okay, um, I realized, ooh, hey, I can cancel 25 now, so I did that. Usually, of course, we'll skip that step there. Said, so, ooh, hey, I can factor four out of everything. So I did that. There we go. And it's kind of basically, what I'm going to say here, folks, is usually I'm going to factor the four out of the root because four times, so I can kind of factor the four out of the root. That's really just taking square root of four times square root of the stuff that's left over. So root four times two, root of that stuff there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense, everybody. Yep. Yeah. All right. Now, one of the whys. Why did I put a two fifths there? Okay. The idea here, folks, is that I wanted to be able to do that right there. Okay. I wanted to be able to factor a number out of this thing. And by factor number out, I wanted no numbers left over outside that one right there. Okay. In other words, I wanted those two numbers there to be exactly the same number. Okay. Now, clearly, they aren't exactly the same number to start off with. Okay. Oh, and by the way, folks, I don't want to turn the 4 into a 25. Okay, I want to turn the 25 into a 4. The number by itself needs to stay that number, at least temporarily. Okay, so it's a 25. I want to kind of convert over into 4. Well, how do I do that? Well, I did it by saying, oh, hey, if I can, if I had a 25 down here, I could cancel the 25s. Right, so 25 just went away. And oh, if I happen to have a 4 here, oh, hey, now I've got a 4 in both places. That's what I wanted. So now I could factor the 4 out. Yeah. Okay. Where did the four of the 25 come from? They came from the fact that I had a two fifths originally, and then I squared it. Yeah. Okay. Two squared gives me the four, five squared gives me the 25. Okay. So that's how I knew I needed a two fifths in this substitution, folks. Okay. I knew that I had to make that 25 cancel out eventually, and I had to square some. So basically, what do I need to have down here to get a 25 to show up after I square it? Well, Need the five, yeah. Five squared, 25, 25 is canceled, it's 50. So it's gotta be a five sitting there, okay? I want the four to show up. How do I get the four to show up? Well, I get to show up by putting a two right here because two squared will give me the four that I want to see, yeah, okay? So that two fifths, is that making sense why that's there now, yeah? I'm gonna do that every single time for these problems, okay, one second. So whatever's underneath the root here, I'll come back and touch on the root here in a second, okay? And the secant, I'm not worrying about the secant yet. Okay, so we are not worrying about that secant. Okay, so yeah, don't worry about that quite yet. Okay, so secant is there. We'll talk about that here in a bit. Okay, the two fifths is all I want to do deal with at this point. Okay, take the stuff under the root, turn the number in front of the x's into the number by itself. Okay, so yeah.
basically. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, so the two bits doesn't. Yes. Look, look through the problem. Yes. Look through the problem and figure out. But but as as he pointed out, you're basically it's what it's square root twenty five is oh five square root four is oh. So it's, it's real simple to do, okay? The one thing I want you to be aware of though, folks, is there won't always be perfect squares in here, yeah? Okay, so, so if that 25 had been a three, I'd have to put a square three down, right? Okay, so sometimes they won't be perfect squares, but if it's a three, it's square three. Okay? So, because technically a square 25, we know that's five. So technically it's always square, when it's just perfect squares we do, basically, yeah. This coefficient is dead simple once you know why it has to be there and how to get it, okay? So, so there's the why on that. Okay. Now, again, we're not going to worry too much about the secret here. We'll come up in a second. Okay? So one of the problems that I've got with this integral, folks, let me scroll back up here for a second. One of the problems, or I say one of the problems, let's say a problem that if it wasn't there, I could do the problem. Let's say it that way. Okay? So I could do the integral if this wasn't here. And that's the fact that there are two things underneath the square root here. If I had just the four, that's easy to deal with. I think square root four is two. So I could deal with that. Okay? If I had just the 25x squared, hey, I could deal with that because I know how to, how to, how to, I know how to take the square root of that. Yeah. So basically, and what's left over is something we can integrate. Okay. So if I didn't have two terms underneath the root here, folks, this would be, a, I claim, a really, really simple problem. Right. So that's kind of the issue here at some levels. I've got those two terms underneath the root there. And so again, I've got all this work here. And okay? we talked about why the coefficient, and we see kind of how that all works out there. Um, and let's notice again that what we've got left over then is we've got that bit right there. So secret squared minus one. Okay, now, uh, let me off the side over here. Squeeze it in here. It's right there, okay. Um, there were two formulas from the previous section you need to know here. First one, of course, and not for this particular problem, but you will need this down the road, okay. Um, so sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. We've used that a lot in the last section. Guess what, folks? It's useful in this section as well. Okay. Um, the other one, I shouldn't say two. There's really three here. Um, the other one is the tangent and the secant one. So tangent squared plus one is equal to secant squared. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, let me take this second one. Let me just rewrite this a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just subtract the one from both sides. And if I subtract the one from both sides, I get the tan squared is secant squared minus one. Yep. Copy that. Okay. These three formulas here, folks, add them to the list of things that if you don't have written down or know somewhere, have fun doing these problems. Okay. You need to know. Them, okay. Now, again, the sine squared plus cosine squared, that's one you all should know. Okay, that's You should know that one coming out of a trigger free count bus. Okay? Um, the tangent and the secant one, the second one here, we derive this one up. You know how to derive it, that's fine. Or, again, you could just memorize this one. Okay? But once you got the second one memorized, the third one's dead simple. You have to subtract the one, both sides of the third, or the second one. Okay? Now, why is this useful? What do I see right there underneath that underneath that root? I see secant squared minus one. Yes. Remember what I said a minute ago is, is that I would really, really, yeah, Casey, good. Yeah, good. Casey got it. Uh, what I would really, really like to do is not have two things underneath that root, right? Well, I've got two things under the root, or do I? Well, in Casey online caught it. No, because what's secant squared minus one? That is simply tangent squared. That's all that is. Yep. Okay. So, equals two square root. Be careful with this. Yep. Try to get this in today because it's important. Okay. Tangent squared of theta. Note again that I did not take the square root of that. Okay. So be careful with that. We'll talk about it here in a second. Okay. Now, that's also then, folks, why the secant. I'll talk a little bit more about this tomorrow, but I want to deal with the square root first, and then we'll probably talk about why the secant. The secant was up here because it allowed me to use this formula down here. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. So I want to deal with the square root first, get this out of the way. Okay. So first of all, come back, we'll pick up this problem here in a minute. Okay. A little bit of a side trip here.
Yeah. yeah. That's right. Does anybody know what the square root of x squared is? Plus or minus x, x. Um, unfortunately, both of you are wrong. Okay. I know a lot of people say x, and I know a lot of people say plus or minus x. That's what I actually want to deal with here is the plus or minus plus x, okay? Um, the square root of x is not just x, and it is not also plus or minus x, okay? I know that at some level you guys are kind of taught to say square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. It's not, okay? That's the point I want to make here with this stuff. It's important what we're doing here, okay? The square root of x is, in fact, absolute value of x, okay? Um, here's the thing, folks. This is algebra at some level, definition of function algebra stuff, stuff that most of you probably saw at one point in time, didn't make a heck of a lot of sense, and so you ignored it, and you went on with your life, and never came back up to haunt you, okay? It's usually the way it's going to work out. Functions technically are what? When I plug in an x, I need to get exactly one y back out. That's technically what defines a function. I plug n x in, I get exactly one y out. Okay? I can't have multiple y's out because I don't want to guess which one do I want to get out of that function, okay? which is why square roots are not plus or minus, because if they're plus or minus, you get two things out of the root. I don't want two things out of the root. I want one thing out of the root, yeah? Okay, so we then insist that square roots are always positive, always, 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 always positive, okay? So we do that by throwing absolute value bars on things, okay? So square root of x squared is not x, it's absolute value of x. It's not plus or minus x, it's absolute value of x. Okay, that is important, okay? Now, the next thing here to note or remember is absolute value of x, folks, is defined to be x if x is positive and minus x if x is negative, yeah? Okay, so we'll need both those things tomorrow. We'll go through and do some of this stuff, okay? Now, uh, real quickly, why is again, come back and kind of deal with some numbers here for a second, okay? So what's the square root of four then? Well, it's absolute value of two. Yeah, good. Right, so it's absolute value of two. It's not plus or minus two. Now, where does that plus or minus come from? Yeah, first of all, you need to be careful. There's a difference between asking what's the square root of four and asking what's x. Those are two different problems, despite the fact that in an algebra class, you're taught they're basically the same problem. Yeah, okay, but it's not, okay? X, so what's x? Well, you were taught in algebra class to do what? To square root both sides, yeah? Okay, so x is equal to the square root of four. Now, the problem is, is what's square root of four again? It's two, that's it, yeah, okay. Where's the plus or minus come from? It doesn't come from the square root, despite the fact it's kind of taught that way in algebra class. It comes from the fact that we have to physically put it in, okay? That's technically where that comes from. It comes from the fact that I had to put it in to deal with this thing. And, and of course, x is equal to plus or minus two. So asking what's x in this equation here is different than asking what's the square root of four. And despite the fact that you're kind of taught in an algebra class, they're essentially equivalent questions. They're not, okay? Now, why is that important here? Because what is the absolute value of tangent squared then, folks? Or sorry, what is the, what's the square root? I just gave the answer away, yeah? What is the square root of tangent squared? It's the absolute value of tangent, okay? Because I don't know what, this is, so I don't know, so I don't know what X is. Yeah, I have to put the absolute value bars in there because it might've been negative, yep. I don't know if tangent is positive or negative. So if I wanna do this problem then, so let's pick up real quick, I'm almost out of time here. A couple of things we can talk about maybe. This is equal to two, back to my color here, absolute value of tangent of theta, okay? This is important, okay? There's going to be a problem or two potentially down the road where this can get you in trouble right, if you don't deal with these absolute value bars properly. Okay? All right. Is that clear to everybody? Let me kind of follow. This is something you're not used to doing. I get that. Okay? Yes, Matthew, the root of an unknown value is always the absolute value of that, of that value. And that's just to make sure that it's positive. That's all it is. Okay? We're going to make sure we get a positive number back out. Okay. So, questions on that? Other question I should say, as I scroll up past it, so I can scroll back down. Okay, real quickly, folks, um, we'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow as well. How did I know I wanted a secant here? So I got a couple minutes left, so let's kind of knock this out real quickly. How did I know I wanted a secant here? Okay. 
Okay. Well, again, you've got these two formulas here. Actually, this first one's not going to work out too good for me. I'll have to rewrite that first one a little bit tomorrow. We'll do that tomorrow. Um, I look at the stuff underneath my root. Oh, I should comment as well, folks. What we're doing here doesn't require roots. It's just convenient if roots are in there. Okay. So if I look at my root stuff and I see, what do I see? I see something squared minus a number. Yep. What do I see right there? Something squared minus a number. Yep. Okay. So that part of that formula right there looks an awful lot like what I've got up here. I mean, obviously something squared is different. The numbers are different. Yep. Okay. But I see something squared minus a number, and that's exactly what I see there. Something squared minus a number. Which one did I use again? Secant, which is exactly what that one looks like. Yep. Okay. So this looks vaguely, if you squint, like that formula right there. Okay. Meaning then that take a look at stuff underneath the root, ask yourself which of these three formulas it looks like. I'll have to rewrite that first one a little bit. Okay. But in this case, secant squared minus one, ooh, that looks like a secant squared minus one, secant, okay? What if that minus sign had been a plus? Something squared plus a number, which one does it look like? Oh, it looks like that second one, doesn't it? Something squared plus a number. So if that minus sign had been a plus, what would I have used here? I'd use a tangent because it looks like a tangent, okay? So ask yourself, which of these three down here, again, we're at that first one a little bit, I'll do that tomorrow. Uh, when we get to a certain problem. But which of these three does that thing look like? That tells you which of the three trig functions you want to use, okay? We're gonna use either secant, we're gonna use tangent, or we're going to use sum. Okay, so I'm gonna write this one here as sine squared is one minus, sorry, cosine squared is one minus sine squared. Okay, so I'll write that, do that one tomorrow, okay? That's how I knew to use a secant here, okay? And we'll talk more about that tomorrow as well, because it's not always obvious the first example, okay? That's kind of the whys here, folks. Does it make a little bit of sense? If it's not making a lot yet, don't worry about it. We got more problems to work. Yeah. Okay. So, but hopefully, start to make a little bit of sense about the whys on some of this stuff. Okay. All right. We are out of time. So, we'll stop it here. I'll stick around for questions if you got them, of course. But if not, you are free to go. All right. Yeah. Have a good day.